the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Have you ever wondered how the smallest nation in the world is involved in scandal after scandal after scandal? The Vatican is criticizing newly released claims of mismanagement and internal rebellion. Why a church in the modern era has its hand in cryptocurrency, AI, pharma, banking, and the UN? All across the globe, stories of sexual abuse by priests in the Catholic Church. And why a church is visited by sportsmen, movie stars, ministers, queens, and kings. The Vatican Bank is accused of corruption, money laundering and why whenever they elect a new pope must every politician on earth attend what if i told you that this was all predicted that this nation is the seat of satan how do i know that it was all penned long ago in the bible yes that's right the bible don't believe me have a look for yourself to understand what the vatican is planning we have to read what god warned us they would do in the book of revelation in fact anyone caught on the side of the vatican will not be found in heaven so this topic is of the utmost importance. And whilst it's true that the most read book in the world is the Bible, it's also true the most misunderstood book in the world is the Bible. The prophecies of the Bible are locked away in symbols so that the wicked cannot intercept God's warning to his people. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20, we read, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. This means I cannot give you my own opinion on what I think a prophetic verse means. I have a challenge for you. Could you decipher the meaning of this verse? So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. I'm sure you're probably scratching your head, thinking what's going on here? Well, remember that no prophecy of the scripture can be interpreted privately the Bible defines its own symbols, meaning we have to use the Bible to define the Bible. Let me give you a simple riddle. A man leaves home one evening, he keeps running and is eager to return home, only to find two masked men waiting there. Why did he leave home? I'm sure you're probably thinking, this seems a little cryptic. However, if I told you that the man represented the baseball player in the riddle, Let's replay it. A man leaves home one evening. He keeps running and is eager to return home, only to find two masked men waiting there. Why did he leave home? Because I've told you who the man is, this riddle now makes sense. The prophecies of the Bible work in the exact same manner. You won't figure out the context until you define the symbols. In this documentary, we will look at 14 prophecies to determine that the Vatican is the first beast of revelation. To put things into perspective, the chances of fulfilling 8 prophecies in the Bible is 1 times 10 to the power of 28. By pushing the envelope to 14 prophecies, this will do 3 things. Validate the Bible as the word of God, strengthen the faith of believers, and expose the Vatican. Prophecy number 1 states, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet coloured beast. Since the Bible defines its own symbols, what does a woman actually represent? Ephesians 5.23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. A woman represents a church. This is so well understood today that many Christians call the church the bride of Christ. In fact, the angel in the same chapter goes on to add another definition. Revelation 17.18, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So a woman can be a church or a city at the same time. It is no mystery that the headquarters of the Catholic Church is 
the Vatican City. What is a beast in prophecy? Daniel 7.23 we learn, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. We learn that a beast is a kingdom or nation. In fact, we still refer to countries as beasts today. We have the Russian bear, the lion of the United Kingdom, and even the American bald eagle. So John in vision really saw a church join with a nation. After the siege of Rome from 537 to 538 AD, General Belisarius was able to gain back control of Rome and install Pope Vigilus. It is written, Pope Vigilus ascended the papal chair in 538 AD under the military protection of Belisarius, according to History of the Christian Church. This can be further confirmed by the account of Bishop Strossmeyer, a Croatian-born Roman Catholic priest. At the Vatican Council in 1870, called by Pope Pius IX, he stated, Pope Vigilus, in AD 538, bought the papacy from Belisarius, agent of the Emperor Justinian. The prophecy was fulfilled, but we also learn in Revelation 17 verse 18 that the woman is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Did they reign over the kings of the earth? Well, during the years 538 to 1798 AD, the popes enjoyed great power over kings. One emperor, Henry IV of Germany, was even forced to kneel before the Pope in humiliation in his road to Casanova. The Popes were so powerful they could settle disputes between rivaling countries. For example, in the Treaty of Torcedillas, the Pope divided territories between Spain and Portugal. Prophecy number two states, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-coloured beast having seven heads. In vision, John sees that the beast has seven heads. What do the seven heads represent in prophecy? The angel goes on to define this in Revelation 17, 9 and states, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. A mountain can also be defined as a mount or a hill, according to Strong's Concordance. So is the Vatican located where there are seven mounts or hills? The seven hills are Aventine Hill, Salian Hill, Capitoline Hill, Esquiline Hill, Palatine Hill, Quirino Hill, Vimno Hill, hence why the title City of Seven Hills usually refers to Rome. Have you ever played a code game where you match the letters to numbers? Let's try. A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals 3. What's the total value of the word cab? The answer is 6. Why did I get you to play that game? You'll see in a second. Prophecy number 3 claims, No man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Let's break it down. This nation has a name. That name has a number, but that number belongs to a man. So that means the name must belong to the man, and it must equal 666. The thing is, the Vatican must always have a man stand at the head. They call him Pope. What is the predominant title popes have carried throughout history? As reported in the Catholic publication of Our Sunday Visitor, the letters inscribed in the Pope's mitre are these, Vicarius Filii Dei, which is Latin for Vicar of the Son of God. Catholics hold that the church, which is a visible society, must have a visible head. Christ, before his ascension into heaven, appointed St. Peter to act as his representative, hence to the Bishop of Rome, as the head of the church was given the title Vicar of Christ. Did you know every letter in the Latin alphabet has a number attached to it? We call it Roman numerals. An I equals 1, a V or a U equals 5, an X equals 10, an L equals 50, and a C equals 100. D equals 500, and every other letter is 0. So all we have to do is spell out the name Vicarious Filii Dei, and as you can see on your screen, it does indeed add up to 666. 
In fact, this prophecy was so damning that the popes have attempted to socially distance themselves away from that title. However, the title has still been used in official Vatican documents. Prophecies number 4, 5 and 6 state, Behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Revelation 17 verse 8. Since a beast is a nation, that means we learn that this beast, or nation, will come to power. They will lose that power, and then they will regain that power. Did this happen to the Vatican? Well, we learn that Pope Vigilus ascended the papal chair in 538 AD under the military protection of Belisarius. And then in 1798, General Berthier made his entrance into Rome, abolished the papal government, and established a secular one. And then we read, this morning, there was another sovereign independent state in the world. At that time, Premier Mussolini, as Italian foreign minister representing King Victor Emmanuel, the first Italian premier ever to cross the threshold of the Vatican, exchanged with Cardinal Gaspari, papal secretary of state representing Pope Pius XI. Ratifications of the treaty signed at the Lateran Palace on February the 11th. By that simple act, the sovereign independent state of Vatican City came into existence once again. So from 1929, the Vatican regained that nation power. Here's another riddle to help you get this one. If in two days I've grown two years, how many years have I grown? Four days. The answer should be four years. Well, in the Bible, in prophecy, each day represents a year. So, how long was the first reign of the Vatican supposed to last? In Revelation 13 we read, And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Firstly, how many days are there in the biblical month? The answer is thirty. We learn this from the flood of Noah. Therefore, forty-two months represent one thousand two hundred and sixty days. One thousand two hundred and sixty days in prophecy is then one thousand two hundred and sixty years. Does history confirm this? Well, we know that Pope Vigilus ascended the papal chair in 538 AD. So if the papacy came to power in 538 AD and was supposed to reign for 1,260 years, all we have to do is do the math. 538 plus 1,260 is 1798. Did they lose power in that year? In 1798, General Berthier made his entrance into Rome, abolished the papal government and established a secular one. So we know that the first reign of the Vatican was to last 1,260 years, but during this time they were to kill Christians. Revelation 13, 5 and 7, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Who are the saints? Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. Saints are living Christians. So according to the prophecy, during their first reign the Vatican were to slaughter Christians. Well, the Roman Catholic Church is famous for killing many Christians throughout history, and we see this in instances such as the Catharists. The Inquisition has its origins in early organized persecution of non-Catholic Christian religions in Europe. In 1184, Pope Lucius sent bishops to southern France to track down heretics called Catharists. These efforts continued into the 14th century. In 1231, Pope Gregory charged the Dominican and Franciscan orders to take over the job of tracking down heretics. Gregory continued the policies of his predecessors against heresy in southern France and northern Italy. He strengthened the Inquisition and entrusted its operations to the Dominicans. The bloodshed of the Catholic Church is so well known and widespread today that the popes have had to issue apologies due to the horrific atrocities carried out in the past. For teaching faith contrary to the teaching of the Church of Rome, History records the martyrdom of more than a hundred million people. Prophecy number nine states, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-coloured beast, full of the names of blasphemy. We are told that this nation will be a blasphemous nation. There are actually two biblical definitions for blasphemy. The first is when one claims to be God, the Jews answered him, speaking to Jesus, saying, For a good work we stand thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. And the second, when one claims power to forgive sin, 
Mark 2, 7 to 8. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God only? So, do the popes break even one of these definitions? Well, you'll be surprised to know they break both. We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. The Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, he is Jesus Christ himself hidden under the veil of flesh. The power of the priest is the power of the divine person. For the transubstantiation of the bread requires as much power as the creation of the world. Thus, the priest may be called the creator of the creator. This is speaking of the Eucharist. Do you remember the second definition? Don't go to God for forgiveness, come to me according to Pope John Paul II in the LA Times. This judicial authority will even include the power to forgive sin. Speaking of the power of the popes, and in the duties and dignities of the priest we read, and God himself is obliged to abide by the judgment of his priest and either not to pardon or to pardon, according as they refuse to give absolution, provided the penitent is capable of it. His latest example, the humble act of confessing his sins. Daniel chapter 11, the Vatican represents the King of the North. At the very end of the chapter, when speaking of the King of the North, what does Daniel say? Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. In this prophecy we learn that this order will be dominantly homosexual in nature and not regard women. Is there evidence for this? Whilst a bishop can marry, as outlined in the Bible, the priests in the Catholic Church avoid it. Celibacy is the renunciation of marriage, implicitly or explicitly made, for the more perfect observance of chastity by all those who receive the sacrament of orders in any of the higher grades. In fact, we learn that the Vatican has a peculiar liking to young boys. Judges And all cross-checked with local newspaper articles. We only took into account priests moved since 1990. There were so many cases, we had to see this on the big screen. So we booked the biggest panoramic movie theater in Paris. Est-ce que vous attendiez à autant de mouvements sur cette carte et donc à autant de prêtres déplacés ou mutés en raison d'affaires de pédophilie? Euh, autant de déplacements et de, de prêtres mutés. Euh... Non, pas, pas, pas de cette... Euh, ça me semblait être quelque chose d'un autre âge. Prophecy number 11 states, And he, speaking of the Vatican, shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. What's considered times and laws in the Bible? Well, times represent holy days which God has set aside for worship. Exodus 23 verse 14, Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. In the Bible, the law represents the commandments of God. Exodus 24 verse 12, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written. Have the popes thought they could change God's holy days or his law? In fact, they've done this in one change. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. By trying to change the Sabbath day, which is a holy day of God, they fulfill this prophecy as it is also the fourth commandment of the ten. In the Clifton Tract, Cardinal Wiseman, who became the first Archbishop of Westminster, stated, I am going to propose a very plain and serious question to those who follow the Bible and the Bible only, to give their most earnest attention. It is this, why do you not keep holy the Sabbath day? In outward act, we do the same as yourselves in this matter. We too no longer observe the Sabbath, but Sunday in its stead. But there is this important difference between us. That we do not pretend, as you do, to derive our authority for so doing from a book. But we derive it from a living teacher, and that teacher is the church. By thinking they could change the Sabbath, they attempted to change the law of God. On the left are the original Ten Commandments, and on the right are the Catholic Ten Commandments. You'll notice they've removed commandment number two. They've changed commandment number four and split commandment number 10 into two commandments as they would be missing one. The papacy also literally changed the times with the introduction of the Gregorian calendar in 1582. Through the papal bull, 
Inter Gravissimus by Pope Gregory. Prophecy number 12, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Seeing as how a woman is a church in prophecy, a harlot must be an impure church or apostate church. Why? Because she leaves her spiritual bridegroom, who is Jesus. Jeremiah 3 verse 1, they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. That means this prophecy is telling us that the papacy will be the head of all apostate churches. Has this been fulfilled? The Pope was recognised as the overall authority in the Christian world by an Anglican and Roman Catholic commission yesterday, which described him as a gift to be received by all the churches. If a new United Christian Church was created, it would be the Bishop of Rome who would exercise a universal primacy. The 43-page document, The Gift of Authority, has been produced by the 18-member Anglican Roman Catholic International Commission after five years of debate. The commission concluded that the Bishop of Rome had a specific ministry concerning the discernment of truth and accepted that only the Pope had the moral authority to unite the various Christian denominations. The gift of authority can be found on the Vatican website, where the World Council of Churches is also in participation. The Methodists also signed on to this agreement. In 1999, this was signed by the Lutheran Church, the Federation Worldwide. Later, about five years later, the Worldwide Methodists signed the same agreement. But as of today, we still have had no Protestant evangelical that will stand up and sign this agreement to agree with our brothers and sisters that we are saved by grace through faith to good works. I speak in Italian, but I am not speaking English. Un abbraccio. Grazie. Glory, glory, glory. Tony, thank you, sir. Come on, the man asked us to pray for him. Oh, Father. My dear sir, thank you so from the bottom of our hearts. All of these leaders represent literally tens of thousands of people that love you, that believe God with you, and in answer to your request, we have just prayed for you and with you, and we did so in the Spirit. All of us declare together, be blessed. Once again, all together, be blessed. Amen. 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 The Roman Church has also gone to extreme lengths to heal ties with the Orthodox Church. In the Vatican archives reading from Synodality and Primacy during the first millennium, we learn that both churches agreed that it was Rome which had the first place of honour. When the leader of more than 225 million Orthodox Christians blessed Pope Francis, it meant much more than just a moving gesture. And this is why although the church is split, they are still the same in hierarchy and in doctrine. Rome is not just the mother of harlots in terms of supremacy, but also in doctrine. In striving to pull all religions under one banner, Rome set up the Abrahamic Faith Initiative to integrate the Islamic and Jewish community. And furthermore, in 2019, the document on human fraternity was signed. It reads, This declaration may be a sign of closeness between East and West, between North and South, and between all who believe that God has created us to understand one another, cooperate with one another, and live as brothers and sisters who love one another. 
This document was signed in front of a global audience of religious leaders from Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and other faiths. Prophecy 13 tells us the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. This prophecy tells us that just before Jesus returns, the Vatican will rule a global government with 10 leaders to help them. Does the Vatican plan to split the world into 10 kingdoms? The Club of Rome had its beginnings in April of 1968 when leaders from 10 different countries gathered in Rome. The organization claims to have the solutions for world peace and prosperity. The Club of Rome has been charged with the task of overseeing the regionalization and unification of the entire world. The club's findings and recommendations are published from time to time in special, highly confidential reports, which are sent to the power elite to be implemented. On 17th September 1973, the club released one such report entitled Regionalized, an Adaptive Model of the Global World System. The document reveals that the club has divided the world into 10 political slash economic regions, which it refers to as kingdoms. Pope Francis, amongst many others, are pushing for a global government. But when do they want this? The United Nations wants a one world government in less than 12 years. To put things into perspective, the next prophecy to occur is the loud cry. Then comes the mark of the beast. And after that, the seven last plagues. The seven last plagues all take place within a year. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day. Remember, a day in prophecy represents a year. The global government comes at the end of that year. What ends that global government is Jesus. In other words, if they get this global government in 2030, we could expect to see Christ that soon. However, God can delay their plans and push it back to 2040 or allow them to have it sooner. They are not allowed to initiate this one world government until God allows them to have their way. So what's the delay? God is waiting for everyone to be warned about what the Vatican is planning. Once everyone decides whose side they want to take, then God will allow them to have their way. 2 Peter 3.9 The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us with, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. How long will their global government last? Revelation 17.12 but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Remember, one day is a year. Therefore, one hour is 15 literal days. How do we know it's Jesus that ends the one world government? Revelation 17 verse 13. These, speaking of the ten kings, have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb. The lamb in the Bible represents Jesus. Can we confirm this? John 1 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God. How do you make war with Jesus? Jesus makes it clear that by hurting one of his followers, you hurt him. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. During the seven last plagues, Satan gathers the whole world against the Christians as they've fallen for the last deception, the mark of the Vatican. Revelation 16 verse 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle on that great day of God Almighty. Notice what the scripture says here in verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Jesus is coming to end the world gathering against his people. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. This event where the world surrounds the remaining Christians is known as Armageddon. At this point in time, there are only 144,000 Christians left on the planet. The rest have been martyred. However, the 144,000 will not die. Revelation 17 verse 14, The Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. How badly do they want this one world government? 
Pope Francis made a strong new push for globalism on Thursday, calling for a supranational legal constitutive body to enforce United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and implement climate change policies. And in fact, to confirm that they are aiming for 2030, the head of the UN said this in March 2020. The Sustainable Development Goals are the world's action plan for a fair globalization and a better future for all. We have 10 years to bring that vision to life and we can only get there together. That is why we have launched a decade of action to deliver the goals, to overcome poverty and inequality, to combat the climate crisis and advance gender equality, to build peaceful, just and inclusive societies free of discrimination and hate in harmony with nature. Join us, step up, seize the moment, and let us work together to meet the goals, move our world forward, and leave no one behind. Prophecy number 14 states, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Has the Vatican's deadly wound been healed? Mr. President, final question. Yes, sir. You said famously, when you looked into Vladimir Putin's eyes, you saw his soul. Yeah. When you look into Benedict XVI's eyes, what do you see? God. Good way to end the interview. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Ed ecco il saluto tra Papa Francesco e il Presidente Vladimir Putin. Adesso può avere inizio l'udienza. Pope Francis met with the President of the European Parliament, Martin Schulz. Both leaders discussed how to avoid another tragedy like Lampedusa where hundreds of African immigrants drowned as they tried to make their way to Europe. Half In this affectionate way, the Pope and Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, greeted each other. They spoke privately in Spanish for a few minutes. Vice President Joe Biden is at the Vatican this morning. He met with the Pope and addressed a major gathering on stem cell research. Seth Doan is in Rome where he heard Biden's moving words on the fight against cancer. Seth, good morning. Crowd inside a vast auditorium inside Vatican City today with Vice President calling some of those gathered among the most brilliant minds in the world. Throughout his political career, President Joe Biden's Catholic faith has always been a major presence. He attends Mass every Sunday and has spoken about the importance of religion in his life. President Biden will be the second Catholic ever to leave the United States. He is the first since John F. Kennedy in the 1960s. John Kerry visited Pope Francis in the Vatican in what presumably was his last visit to Rome as Secretary of State of the United States. The last time they both met was in September 2015 during the Pope's trip to the United States. Kerry and the Pope discussed issues concerning climate change and immigration as well as the uncertain political situation in America.
This morning, the Council for Inclusive Capitalism announcing a new partnership between the Pope, the Vatican, and business leaders across the globe. It follows a meeting just over a year ago in which the Pope Francis called for the urgent need for an economic system that is fair, trustworthy, and capable of addressing the most profound challenges facing humanity. Executives are now committing to the Council's pledge to create a more sustainable and equitable system. They include Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan, Johnson & Johnson CEO Alex Gorski, Calpers CEO Marcy Frost, and Merck CEO Ken Frazier. And joining us right now is the founder of that council, Lynn Forster de Rothschild. Uh, Lynn, good morning to you. Uh, you are the brain. Pope Francis met with Apple CEO Tim Cook in what seemed to be a cordial exchange of greetings. The private audience was brief yet seemingly productive. Both the Pope and Cook already share some common interests in bridging people together through environmental issues and technology. Apple CEO gave Pope Francis a check with an undisclosed amount for his work. Yes. The Vatican asks the world's five technology giants to help protect children on the internet. Representatives from Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Microsoft will be in the Vatican this week for a meeting on child dignity, attended by organizations that help minors, experts, political, and religious leaders. Again, the Pope met with Brad Smith, president of Microsoft. Both believe artificial intelligence research should be based on firm ethical foundations. As a result, they will meet again at the end of February to sign the call for ethics. John Kelly III, Executive Vice President of IBM, will also participate. But as he took to the European Parliament, he also delivered a strong political call to arms. Firstly, on immigration. We cannot allow the Mediterranean to become a vast graveyard. On behalf of Michelle and myself, welcome to the White House. Mr. Speaker, the Pope of the Holy See. Members of Congress, I have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you Pope Francis of the Holy See. National Day of Human Fraternity in World Interface Harmony Week. I also acknowledge the significance of the 2019 publication of Human Fraternity for World Peace and Living Together, co-authored by His Holiness Pope Francis and His Eminence the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Sheikh Ahmed al tayeb This declaration is a model for interface harmony and human solidarity. Continue to walk, eh? Continue, eh? 
Before we go, remember who the serpent represents in the Bible. The serpent is Satan. Notice the Vatican audience hall. Now, on first glance, you may think it's just a coincidence that it looks like a snake. Why don't we take a look inside? I'm sure that you can see that only the Vatican can be the beast. And in the next part, we will examine what happened in heaven between Jesus and Satan, Satan's favorite method of attack against God's people, what the mark of the beast truly is, how Satan plans to shift world opinion into accepting it, how the pandemic has played into the Vatican's hands, and finally, the issue the Pope will use to garner support for the mark. El cambio climático.